Nowadays, when people mention the word culture, it is difficult to think what it might mean. To hold culture is almost like trying to grasp smoke or grip water. Culture is an invisible element artists are seeking to capture on canvas or in stone. The Philippines is in many ways like smoke and water. Poets, historians, anthropologists, and especially artists are hard-pressed whenever we express the essence of our people's core. Our archipelago boasts of a variety of dynamism that is difficult to hold down by mere images, words, or conceptual frames. A national spirit is difficult to consider. The essence of the Filipino people at best is rooted in the environment, the most ancestral aspect of the land, where even in our modern life we are reminded of our cultural ethos when we listen to what nature still clearly speaks. People sometimes think that it's all about mixing colors and then magically creating something out of nothing. Art isn't necessarily about the act of creation. The creation element is the easy part. The truth in art happens when no one is looking, which people don't see. We often think art is what we visit in museums, in exhibitions. Art is not about taking a brush dabbing it with paint to make something up. To paint is more of an act of seeing. I believe the very moment an image comes to life is the moment one perceives what that image represents, its spirit, its deep meaning. It is the same with sculpture. It is not that difficult to carve out the semblance of a concept. That merely takes a skill, which is not the purpose of art. The more important aspect of a sculpture is to feel, to listen, to touch the very heart of the subject we are called to come into contact with. It begins as just a feeling inside of us, so that once the work is done, the symbol for us remains an essential feeling, never this solid object that people can now look at. The makers of very large monuments essentially have to understand the invisible origins of the art form, perhaps more than other artists whose fluid mediums allow for flow and mistakes. Given the large-scale nature of Kublai's work sites, numerous sculptures slowly emerge. The projects leave little room for error, made more challenging as the sculptor never works alone. The vision is precisely coordinated with a team that is able to marry the creative activity with the necessary functionality that manages the most well-planned architectural and engineering projects. To the observer, Kublai's workplace initially looks like an industrial worksite, yet above the thick haze of cement, dust, and noisy clanging of steel bars, the true art form must already be completely built in the mind of the artist before a single finger is lifted. What others will eventually enjoy as a manifestation in cement to the artist begins and remains a subtle form that is very carefully tended. In order to create the overwhelming body of work that can now be found in many major cities scattered across Mindanao, 
Kublai dove into a serious vision quest in wishing to understand the depths of culture. His sculptures served to epitomize the precious spiritual foundation of the Filipino people. I'm a medium for higher instruction. People may confuse my, my body of work for my name, but my body of work speaks of higher meaning. So, really ako to. So, you, you can, you are, you are missing the point when, when you look at my work as, as my own, as, as, as an artist, because I am not the real artist here. There's a higher artist, bigger than me, bigger than all of us, who's probably orchestrating all, all these beautiful things na ginabuhat na to. Kublai realized that art was the one way to preserve our forgotten native narratives. Tirelessly, his consistent vision has been to create concrete remembrance of our most authentic roots. Kublai's urgent advocacies are to preserve the oral traditions of Mindanao that are in a rapid state of decline and to concern us with the ecological devastations brought about by accelerated growth. Many of the artist's work also promotes peace and dialogue between Mindanao's diverse peoples. Calling the tribe people, the celebrated sculptures equally celebrate the island's Christian, Moro, and Lumad inhabitants. These and other passions have fueled his vigorous work ethic that has resulted in the creation of a staggering amount of artworks scattered across a vast expanse of Mindanao. One of Kublai's first public monuments now greets all Davao visitors who arrive by sky. As guests first step out of the international airport, the famous Durian Monument readily confounds its many admirers as to just how the artist is able to shape cement, sand, and steel into this thorny fruit. Across Mindanao, Kublai sculptures began to emerge in provincial capitals, churches, parks, ancestral lands, city halls, town memorials, hospitals, and schools. What started as just a personal commitment to call attention to the Philippine cultural process has itself borne countless important sites that highlight in the midst of everyday life important images that preserve the Philippines' rich history and customs. I call my monuments uh, peace monuments. Somewhere in, in those monuments, you would you would find a, a dove, uh, uh, children holding uh, nests, planting seeds, all of those symbols that would lead to peace. You, know? you would always see uh, sculptures of, of children and, and uh, of people from different communities like the Muslims, the, tribe, the, the indigenous peoples, the Christians, and other settlers. So they're all happily together, side by side, uh, respecting each other. It's a, it's a very simple understanding na, na kung kinsa man imong katapad, dawaton nimo, but dawaton with, with the fullest understanding of where, they ke, where they come from. That's why culture is very important. Okay, kung huwag magunit sa ato, ah, walay mag-embrace, mag barbarian na ta. That's why it's, it's, I'm sculpting culture everywhere.